Kind of a little brat kind of kid, climbing walls, running everywhere, uh, really hyper, very active. Totally energetic, never walking, always running. Very focused nonetheless. He realized early on that he wanted to surf and this is what he was going to dedicate his life to. There's a couple of boogie boards floating around in the garage and I grabbed one, jumped in the water and I got these little tubes and that feeling made me want more. He was looking at the magazines and he thought, wow, what a life. I was looking in the magazines and I saw these pictures of Mark Richards and Shane Horan and this up-and-coming young kid from Santa Barbara named Tom Kern. He was supposed to be challenging them for their titles and, and I thought, God, these guys get paid to go surfing. It's the best job in the world. And right then I, I had this dream and it never went away. 22 miles of hard road, 33 years of tough luck. 44 skulls buried in the ground, crawling down through the muck. Oh, yeah. Johnny don't like the teacher. Johnny don't like the school. One day, Johnny, gonna do something. Show him he's nobody's fool. Oh, yeah. Right when my mom and I moved from Thousand Oaks to Oxnard, we got in this pretty bad car accident right in front of Oxnard Airport. A truck ran their stop sign and came crashing into our door. And at the time, it was kind of heavy. I got 200 stitches on the right side of my face. And I'm all right now, but it took me to I was about 16 to become really comfortable with the, the scars on my face.
I was doing a lot of skateboarding at the time and I was skating this cement drainage ditch and fell like, you know, pretty hard. We went to the doctor and they took x-rays. I remember his face when he looked at him, he was like, you know, oh my God, you are in serious trouble right now, kid. They said if he didn't have surgery, he could be paralyzed. So he didn't have very many choices. He goes, I can't believe you're not paralyzed now. And you're gonna be paralyzed for sure if you wait a couple more months. I had a six hour, six and a half hour surgery. I, I took bone from the inside of my hip and I grafted on my spine. They put two screws through a metal bar. Yeah, it's all still in there. That kind of an injury uh, in many people's lives can debilitate them for the rest of their lives. Knowing he was going to be in a body cast, not knowing if he was ever going to surf again, that was pretty hard for a young person. I didn't care about girls, I didn't care about cars, I didn't care about clothes. I just wanted to go surfing. And just starting to get totally involved in the NSSA, the USSF, uh, winding up team captain for both, that was everything in his life. And that just shattered my whole world. I, I went into a full tailspin. I think he spent a lot of time just turning. So turn off the light, cause it's not on the sun, you're hopelessly hopeless, I hope so, for you. It's hard to say if I would be a pro surfer if I didn't have back surgery. It gave me so much drive and it got me so focused that when I was, when he let me go, when he let me go surfing for the first time after surgery, I was like, I'm going ahead full steam, you know, anyone gets in my way, I'm going to run him over. And everyone just thought I was nuts. Back then it was my whole life. You sit there and, and you can't surf, but you're watching it and, and you want it. It makes you want it that much more. And I don't think he's that as gifted as any of these other top athletes. I think it's that drive that pushes him far and above to make him one of the top surfers that, today. Taylor's been through a lot, a couple of accidents, back surgery and the like. And um, He's always had a can-do attitude. I can make it work. As I was coming up with these guys, I remember going, everyone's pretty unique in this group, and I wanted to set myself apart. So I, I'd watch Tom Carroll surf, and he, he just looked different. He, he looked so strong when he surfed, and his turns looked so profound. I was, I was like, wow, you know, like, maybe that's my niche. Maybe I could be the next powerful up-and-coming surfer and try to be known for that. And uh, that's what kept me focused. Like
I've been surfing Totos up at that point. I'd surfed Totos for about 10 years straight. The whole K2 thing came along, and there was a lot of hype around it. And then they had that Totos contest, which I was, you know, super into doing because Totos was my spot. That I liked to surf big waves, and um, it was huge. I remember we we got to the harbor that day. And the waves that were coming over the jetty into the harbor were rocking all the boats in the harbor. So we got out there and it was just huge. I mean, incredibly massive. I got the biggest wave I think I'd caught at Totos in my life up to that point in my first heat in the morning. And it seemed like it was getting bigger and bigger and catching the biggest wave was definitely not on my mind. Ten waves that day were probably easily as big as my wave. And 
I remember ate it on the first wave. Everyone's laughing at me and clapping, telling me, oh, what a good job, and heckling me and stuff. And, and then they got me all fired up and pissed off, and I paddled back out, and I'm going to take off in the next set wave. I don't care. I don't care. We're big. I don't care. I didn't make it. I just don't care. That wave came in, and I took off, and I remember it felt like it took me five minutes to get to the bottom of the wave. That's what it felt like, because I remember every second of it. I still didn't have any idea how big it was though. I thought it was just like another big one. Like everyone caught that day. one of those guys when he takes off on a wave you just you always want to see what's happening. His dance on a wave is so you know, precise and, and, and uh, professional looking. Taylor was all about speed and power. A lot of traditional look to it as far as uh, clean carving, uh, powerful moves, but at the same time uh, he yeah, has a lot of quickness. Taylor's a bull in a china shop. I mean, there's no question about it. You put him on a, a wave and <laughs> he's just coming down the line. He's not stopping for anything. Some people can kind of hack a carve out here and there and throw a lot of spray, but Taylor's seems like he's so disciplined. He always throws a nice, smooth, round turn. He's, he's been just like an inspiration to me because a lot of, a lot of people don't surf like him anymore. He has a low center of gravity and uh, pushes through all his turns and carves through every single thing he does. There's never a break. He'll kind of arc it off the top and draw a line to the bottom and hold his rail all the way to the bottom and hold his rail all the way to the top and push and push all the way, never really letting up. It's constant pressure and flowing it perfectly together. Kind of a mix of a carol and a current. Where carol will have maybe more aggression and power where Kern would be flowy or Taylor's kind of a mix of those two. There's guys like Kern and Carol and Aki who have a natural flow with the wave and, and uh, an energy about them when they're on the wave. It's like they put themselves in the best position to really maximize like their bottom turns, the speed that they come out of it. And that's kind of where I've gone with my surfing is try to utilize the, the most power you can possibly get out of a wave and the fastest you can go on it. Well, I can understand what goes on in my mind. I can't explain it, but at times it makes me blind. And when I'm feeling blue, part of you make me feel just
can't explain it, but times it makes me blind. And when I'm feeling blue, I thought of you who make me feel just fine. I think Taylor's kind of the only real uh, professional athlete that's a pro surfer. He definitely trains a lot more than I do. He wakes up in the morning, he stretches, and he you know, has his carrot juice, and then he goes down and he rides a couple waves, and then he goes get some massage, and he's got this going or that going. It's like, dude, don't you ever just relax? Taylor wakes up at 6, and he goes for a surf. He'll come home, get a bite to eat, and he's off to yoga. 
And then pretty much he'll come home and call Sam his personal trainer and he's off to the gym. At the same time he's raising kids and I mean pretty incredible how much he juggles and, and how much he continues to improve every year. Taylor's pretty hard to catch Taylor in a bad mood. He's, he's a pretty happy guy. He's got the best heart ever. He's one of the best people I've, and one of my best friends in the world. Um, he's, he's a dork, though. <laughs> just a great dude in general, and really so easy going, and just relishes the fact that uh, he has an opportunity to surf and, and be in the water, and um, really have that karma. He's just such an exceptional type of person that it really comes out when he's out in the water so many people that want to be around him, who want to be part of his company because he does treat people like he wants to be treated. And he has seen the, the other side and he knows what it's like to be down and, and to lay in a hospital bed and have no friends come around. He's like one of those guys that when you're friends with Taylor, you know you're going to be friends with him for the rest of your life.
I mean, I'm still friends with people that I met 15 years ago from surfing. I mean, the trophies are great, but they fade and they collect dust and they're a good memory, but the friends that I have last forever.